we're traveling down the Great Ocean Road. We're traveling in winter time, which is not as popular as summertime, but there's less traffic and there's less crowds. Great Ocean Road starts in Torquay and finishes in Allensford, which spans 243 kilometers. We are planning on stopping and seeing all the best attractions. Our first stop will be the town of Torquay. Torquay is approximately 100 kilometers from Melbourne CBD. We've arrived at Torquay, the biggest town on the Great Ocean Road. Torquay is the surf capital of Australia. All the major surf brands are based in this town. If you're looking to buy anything to do with surfing, this town is definitely the place to go shopping in. This is the Rip Curl Pros Winners Trophy, the Bell. It has all the past winners on it going back to the 1960s. For a great view of the main Torquay beaches, go to the Rocky Point Lookout. Normally we'd have to walk along the wooden beach behind me, but because it's low tide, we're going to just jump over the little, the little uh, sea water coming in. Jan Junk Beach. This is Torquay Surf Beach. We stopped near the Fisherman's Beach to see the sundial. It was created by local artists and opened in 1996. Just look at the beautiful mosaic. It comprises more than 120,000 Italian glass tiles. If you stand in the center of the design, you become the actual dial. People, a lot of surfers reckon Winky's better than Bells because it's got a better wall and runs along the reef a lot better. As you can see, there's a lot of guys out at the moment. It's not that big, but it's very clean. This is Bells Beach, the famous beach where they have the Rip Curl Pro every year, except for the last two years. But uh, yeah, it's one of the most famous beaches in the world. Not very big today, but there's a few surfers out there. We are passing through Anglesey, a lot smaller town than Torquay. Anglesey is bypassed by international tourists and more sought after by holiday makers from Melbourne.
we are at Teddy's lookout and the views are spectacular. Teddy's lookout is located in Lawn. We spent one night in Lawn. It's a lovely town and more fashionable than other towns along the Great Ocean Road. Lawn has caught the attention of both local and international crowds. Not only do the tourists love Lawn, so do the white cockatoos. There are many things to enjoy in Lawn. This suspension bridge was built in 1937. It's a beautiful old bridge, in a unique style, not often found in Australia. We are going back a few kilometres before Lawn to see a few things we didn't see the previous day because it was too dark. Behind me is the White Lady Lighthouse, or that's what the locals call it. It's 33 metres tall and it's 60 metres above sea level. Um, and it's still operational today. When the lighthouse is open, you can buy a ticket for $10 and you can climb the spiral staircase to the top of the lighthouse for panoramic views of the Great Ocean Road and the ocean. Here's a question, which ocean is it? There are probably more beautiful houses along the Great Ocean Road, but this pole house is iconic. It was designed to sway like trees and withstand cyclone winds. The Great Ocean Road was built between 1919 and 1932. It was mainly built by soldiers coming back from World War I. 3,000 men worked on the road, 2,300 of the men were returning soldiers from World War I. Seafood restaurant in Victoria. Let's have lunch there, hey? We stopped to have lunch at the Lawn Pier restaurant. I've got John Dory fish and it's got some chips and salad. Uh, prawn salad. Yeah, and. and uh, crab soup. Crab soup, okay. It's really nice. I like it. I think it's a nice place. We can recommend. Hmm? What do you think, Bing? Absolutely, it was fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Eh? Yeah. Jean Dory was so tender, beautiful, mm -hmm. and the chips were magnificent. Yeah. Yeah. The expected rain has finally come. Unfortunately, we've had a good run.
The section of road between Lawn and Apollo Bay is the best part of the Great Ocean Road. We unfortunately got some bad weather. If you want to see views of Apollo Bay from high up, go to the Mariner's Lookout. It is also a popular takeoff point for hang gliders. Apollo Bay is a lovely small town, roughly the halfway point on the Great Ocean Road. We wanted to stay longer in Apollo Bay, but our main objective was to get to Port Campbell and see the 12 Apostles. So we drove further on. We are passing through the Otway Rainforest. It's a huge national park established in 2005. We decided to do the treetop walk. Just a little advice, if you're travelling from Apollo Bay, there are two roads to get to the Otway Treetop Adventures. The shorter one is a very windy road, only take it on if you're an experienced driver. The other road is longer, but it's a lot easier to drive. We took the windy road and it was a very stressful experience. We are driving further on to Port Campbell. Port Campbell is a small fishing village. It's set in a beautiful natural port and has some wonderful cafes and restaurants. We stayed in Port Campbell for two nights. We first decided to see the Great Ocean Road attractions usually overlooked by tourists. Here is a quick show reel of what we saw. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Most of the iconic attractions are located between Port Campbell and Princetown. And yes, we are now going to see the 12 Apostles. 
It sound right, boy. Lockhart Gorge is the site of the most famous 19th century Australian shipwreck. And the gorge was named after the shipwreck clipper. The Lockhart ship sank just over there a long time ago and 52 people were on the boat and only two survived. anyone here today. Uh, this is I guess what's happened with the pandemic. Um, the international tourists can't get to Australia and it's, it's obvious what we're seeing right now. between Port Campbell and Princetown. There are many things to see. This is Sherbrooke River. Broken Head. The Royal Apostles were originally called the Sow and Piglets, but it was changed in the 1920s to the Twelve Apostles. The name change was probably a marketing decision, made in the hope of drawing tourists along the newly created Great Ocean Road. And it was a successful decision. There were never Twelve Apostles. Their name wasn't true even in the 1920s. There were originally eight, and now even less. One collapsed in 2005. Gibson Steps are located about two minutes drive from the 12 Apostles. refers to the staircase leading down to the beach. There are actually 86 steps carved by a local craftsman, Hugh Gibson. And this is also a famous surfing beach. You get big waves here, but today eh, it's a bit messy, no one's there. We're heading back to Melbourne. We love the 12 Apostles, but the other attractions are just as good. The Great Asian Road is not all about the destination, it's the trip itself. And if you like our video today, you know what to do. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Cheers!